Howdy gang! Welcome to episode 2 of the Cerevista Sunday Saloon. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favourite American westerns, the absolutely mesmerising Johnny Guitar, directed by Nicholas Ray and released in 1954. Johnny Guitar is brimming with drama, colour and laced with raging undercurrents. In a small Arizona cattle town, we meet Vienna, a fearlessly independent pistol-packing saloon owner, played by Hollywood icon Joan Crawford. Marshal John McIvers, played by Western legend Ward Bond, and his townsfolk are persistently riled up by the real leader of their pack, Emma Small played by Mercedes McCambridge. McCambridge provides unforgettable opposition to Vienna as a sexually repressed, venomous cattle baron, intensely attracted to but fearful of Joan and her power. Much to Emma's chagrin, regulars at Vienna's saloon include a local outlaw gang fronted by the Dancing Kid, played by Scott Brady, pictured alongside the handsome drifter of the movie title name, played by Sterling Hayden. Johnny Guitar plays a secondary character to Crawford's force to be reckoned with, as the guitar strumming object of her affections. And he arrives just as Vienna is given 24 hours to pack her pistols and get the hell out of Dodge. Vienna's association with change in the form of a new railroad coming into town proves one of the underlying threats to ringleader Emma and the townsfolk, and the feud between the two sides unfolds in an explosive series of events, including a bank robbery, shootings, arson, and the attempted lynching of Vienna in the build-up to the furious finale. Life in the Old West wasn't easy, let alone for women. Western movies, especially in the 1950s, are often guilty of portraying the few female characters as either eye candy, homemakers, or even worse. In Johnny Guitar, women absolutely rule the roost. Countless spite is exchanged between the two fearless female central characters in magnificent performances that have held their place in time and helped make Johnny Guitar such an iconic Western. I'll never forget the very first time I saw this film as a young, impressionable girl. Not all little girls want to grow up to be princesses, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one mesmerised by the determination, independence and iron will displayed by Joan Crawford's character. Tense, highly charged and filled with fantastic, loaded one-liners, including my absolute Vienna favourite, Downstairs we sell whiskey and cigars. All you can buy up these stairs is a bullet in the head. Now which do you want? If Vienna wasn't enough, Mercedes McCambridge convincing portrayal of the seething lynch-happy Emma is poignant and challenging too. Note they refer to Emma as a cattle baron, never a baroness, in this epic power struggle that features a trove of men that serve as little more than objects of female fancy and assistance to their goals. Joan's performance is intense, with emotions spilling from the screen in scenes such as the late night moment, where dressed in a deep scarlet velvet gown, she and Johnny Guitar have a dramatically revealing heart to heart. This movie was a game changer for me and I'm sure countless more women and men. I can only imagine what it was like to have seen this in the 1950s. I must mention and recommend here another Sarah Vista favourite called The Woman They Almost Lynched, which preceded this movie in 1953 and features some similarly bitter rivalry, including an epic bar fight scene between Audrey Totter and Joan Leslie. Johnny Guitar was shot in the United States in Sedona, Arizona, somewhere I've been fortunate enough to visit in recent times. It's a beautiful part of the world worthy of a visit if you're a Western location fan or not. I frequently share photographs and articles about locations on my various social media channels, 
So if you'd like to subscribe here, there, or everywhere, please join me on the trail. Johnny Guitar is highly regarded by some prominent big hitters in the movie industry, including Martin Scorsese, pictured here with former Western TV star Mr. Rick Dalton. He said contemporary American audiences at the time of release didn't know what to make of Johnny Guitar, so they either ignored it or they laughed at it. European audiences, on the other hand, free of conventional bias, saw Johnny Guitar for what it was, an intense, unconventional, stylized picture full of ambiguities and subtexts that render it extremely modern. You can find this introduction on this stunning 4K restoration released by Olive Films, which I thoroughly recommend. And as always, all info is available in my links after the episode. Johnny Guitar was shot in true colour on 35mm film and was originally intended for 3D viewing. At the risk of repeating gossip, I'm only going to say this once, but the movie's director, Nicholas Ray, was somewhat typically of the time considered a Hollywood hedonist and is rumoured to have had affairs with many stars he worked with, including Joan Crawford at the time of Johnny Guitar. I'll stay away from the Gloria Graham bombshell, but you may like to research that story further for yourself. Joan went on to express her dislike of Johnny Guitar and said I should have had my head examined. No excuse for a picture being this bad, nor me making it. I hope that she went on to change her mind on this point, as it's my all-time favourite performance of hers. Joan's lifestyle and complex character is well documented in various books, memoirs and gossip stations. Fans of Miss Crawford will likely be aware of the legendary feud between Joan and her Baby Jane co-star, Bette Davis. But tensions between the two leading ladies of Johnny Guitar were also apparently rife off and on set. Nicholas Ray claimed that during a rage, Crawford drunkenly threw McCambridge's costumes into the street. Joan later laughingly admitted that she had indeed, but that it was Mercedes' own clothing. After filming the movie, both McCambridge and Hayden went so far as to publicly declare their disdain for Crawford. Sterling Hayden was quoted as saying, there is not enough money in Hollywood to lure me into making another picture with Joan Crawford. And I like money. <laughs> Apparently Robert Mitchum was considered for the role of Johnny Guitar, but he was under contract and RKO wouldn't loan him out. Hayden suggested himself he was perhaps a strange choice for the role. An interesting thought considering he didn't sing, play the guitar, ride a horse, nor shoot a gun. McCambridge called Joan a mean, tipsy, powerful, rotten egg lady. Joan, never one to leave quietly, retaliated with the quip, I have four children, I do not need a fifth. Mercedes McCambridge, pictured here with James Dean in Giant, went on to appear in numerous classic TV Western series, such as Rawhide, Bonanza and Gunsmoke. She also went on to provide the voice for the horror movie, The Exorcist. Sunday Saloon wouldn't be complete without a reference to my favourite director, Sergio Leone. Johnny Guitar was one of many important westerns referenced with love by the great man himself. It's no secret I have a great fondness for Once Upon a Time in the West. There are many parallels between the two central female characters in Claudia Cardinale's Jill and Crawford's Vienna. Two women with a similar past striving for a new future via the incoming railway and its associated changes coming to town. Small details like the two characters having models of the new dream and whether they be brandishing guitars or harmonicas, a troop of adoring gunslingers at their helm. I hold Johnny Guitar in the highest regard and I firmly believe its unique, rich, 
operatic style boldly ventured into a new territory for the Western movie and helped pave the way for the great Leone to create his own cinematic masterpiece. Soundtrack Some of you will know the movie title theme song, Peggy Lee's Johnny Guitar, which I perform a version of at the end of this episode. The superbly talented Peggy wrote the lyrics for the song. The music credit goes to Victor Young, although I must reference the tune was taken from a classical piece called Spanish Dance No. 5 Andaluza by Enrique Granados. Another wonderful song about Johnny Guitar is My Restless Lover, performed by Patti Page. Again, please check my links for inspirations after the show. The Johnny Guitar soundtrack was composed by Victor Young, who worked on more than 300 film scores, including Shane and The Stranger Wore a Gun, which also features Western legend Ernest Borgnine, pictured here with Lee Marvin on set. Borgnine appears in Johnny Guitar as Bert, one of the Dancing Kids gang, and he went on to appear in many Vista favourites. The title theme of Johnny Guitar is woven throughout the picture with beautiful orchestration, including for an unforgettable scene in which Joan is sat at a grand piano in a pure white ball gown as she is accosted by the townsfolk, at this point consumed by jealous rage and all dressed in stark black funeral attire. Victor Young also produced the score for film noir classic Hell's Half Acre, which I reference in my song Shoot Luke or Give Up the Gun. A little bonus point for us music lovers here is that before becoming a director, Nicholas Ray studied radio broadcasting, and along with Alan Lomax, he travelled around the South and recorded folk musicians for the Library of Congress. In the early 1940s, Lomax and Ray were hired by CBS to produce a regular evening slot headed by Woody Guthrie, pictured. Bullets ain't cheap, but there are no arguments here. Johnny Guitar is a masterpiece. It's one of the most entertaining American Western movies I've ever seen and a huge influence on my musical project. Incredible performances throughout, it's got strong women, strong colours, stylish costumes, an original soundtrack, it's rewatchable and iconic. 9 out of 10 bullets from Sarah Vista. I hope you enjoyed the Sarah Vista Sunday Saloon. Before you go, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for updates. Keep your eyes on the horizon for my next episode and I'll see you on the trail. Play the guitar, play it again, my Johnny. Maybe you're cold. But you were so warm inside I was always a fool for my Johnny For the one they call Johnny Guitar Play it again, Johnny Guitar What if you go? What if you stay? I love you. But if you're cruel, you can be kind, I know. There was never a man like my Johnny. The one they call Johnny. Play it again, Johnny Guitar